but I thought this topic of healthcare regulation and the sniffles was interesting, and you brought it up recently. Uh, the expectation that diseases will be treated, this is my, my question for Dr. Brogan, uh, that diseases will be treated um, not for emergency rooms or even doctor's office as a cost for healthcare, uh, for example, as making hospitals less safe because of the sniffles, because of bacteria and viruses, that the regulations might um, lead people by way of an expectation that healthcare will pay and treat anything, that this is some, this might be a hidden cost. Is that what you were saying? Is that, is that a reasonable one? Um... I'll just say quickly, just to clarify. All I said was because emergency rooms are free, Right? They have to treat you no matter what you... If you go in the evening to an emergency room, you're right, they don't take a day off of work. They all go in the evening. And I've been to an emergency room with real issues in the evening. And what you get is long, long lines of people because they're not feeling well. Not because they have a, a life-threatening disease, but because they're not feeling well. They use it as their primary care physician. And that cost has to be borne by somebody, so it's borne by those people who pay insurance. And that's the, that's the free rider problem that you get in the healthcare markets as they were before Obamacare. And it's still are because, because so many people are still uninsured. But, uh, but I, that's just a point of clarification. I don't think it's essential. Do uh, you want to take another question? Should you give that? Oh, no. Yeah, I mean, we can have a whole discussion you, about if you are, No, very briefly. So if, if you're concerned with that kind of stuff, you, know, you go to Western Europe. You know, U.S. has a very peculiar system because we provide, we provide health insurance only for the elderly. And that comes from Social Security. That's the you, only Medicare. country in the world. It's, it's Medicare. Medicare, yes. So it's for the elderly. So, so that doesn't happen. If you go to Europe, you receive health in most Western European countries on the basis of being a citizen, like the story I said about public... Uh, so once you have that, and, and there is a mandate of the state of doing that, the costs are lower too. You know? And they do treat everybody in the hospitals. And it's cheaper. And they do have better health outcomes. So should we and they're more equalitarian societies. Oh, I'm for uh, so you know, public health. So should we debate this, since we brought it up? Uh, so we might as well end with this. Yeah, I, I disagree totally. Uh, I come from a socialized medicine country. My father was a doctor in a socialized medicine country. A, a country that has more doctors per capita than any country in the world because it's a Jewish country. Um, and uh, if you're really sick, if you're really sick, my father would advise you to get on a plane and get to the Mayo Clinic if you can afford it, um, in spite of all of that. If you look at survivability rates, if you look at catastrophic stuff, if you look at the number of people who are in the NHS in England die waiting for an MRI, die waiting for me to be diagnosed. Yes, we pay more for healthcare in the United States. Cool, I paid more for healthcare because I got treated and I got, I, you know, I got examined and I was told, I, I once had this weird thing going on, and I was told nothing, there's no problem, you're okay. That was worth the money to be known that. If I'd been in Israel, I would have waited three weeks and if I had something, I would be dead. So, um, and as I said, the fact that we still have private healthcare in the United States subsidizes the healthcare for the rest of the world. So, no, healthcare outcomes here are much better. Um, if you look, if you look at the numbers, so let me let, let's let's look at the numbers, right? If you're a Swede in the United States, you live as long as a Swede in Sweden, or maybe longer. If, uh, look at that. Look at the data. If you're a Japanese in the United States, Japanese live longer than any people on the planet. Uh, if you're Japanese in America, you live as long or longer than a Japanese in Japan. Uh, when you control for the fact that we are so diverse and that the enormous genetic factors that determine longevity, then the differences in life expectancy disappear uh, in the United States. Uh, and, and, and that's true of a lot of things when you compare Scandinavia to America. If you look at Scandinavians in America versus Scandinavians in Scandinavia, they're just as happy if not happier. They're wealthier than the Scandinavian brothers. Come on, man, that argument. Yeah, it's, it's true. Awful. Yeah, sure, it's of course true. it's true. Yeah. If you get Scandinavians that arrive in the 19th century that are white and blonde and you know, are part yeah, of the wealthy well. part, yeah, sure, they've yeah. done very well. Yeah. And they even have the best health care kids. It doesn't matter if it's private or not. And then you're putting together African Americans that we impose 400 years of slavery. Mm -hmm. And according to you, you know, it's all tough luck. And you know, and and then, that, and, no, 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 you know, no. and then you have they have obviously they push down you know uh, some of the health outcomes, and you're telling me, oh, yeah, screw them. No, so I'm not saying that. I'm yeah, saying and that's you can't blame private and medicine, medicine for that. But let me say this because I think you we should have this now. This is an important point because you said, who cares? Who cares about inequality? It's all about you know these three problems: poverty at the bottom, cronyism on top, and growth. And again, you pay lip service to the solving the problems at the bottom because your solution means those black guys that have, you know, say, higher rates of, of, of uh, uh, diabetes, sure. 
screw them, they should, you know, it's their problem, it's their responsibility, even though part of the reason why they're there is because they are poor, because we oppress them over years, because, you know, uh, we have, we have uh, issues associated to uh, obesity and all of those things that come with low income, you, you know? So the notion, if, if you're not going to pay lip service to that, yes, you know, the way to think about, and the other thing, you think of medicine as being just curative, you don't think of the role the preventive medicine. So a good part of our problems, we let the problems accumulate. Whereas a good chunk of what happens in Western Europe is that we have preventive you know, medicine. And so most of the problems are caught early on. And so you don't need the expensive care. So he wouldn't be dead you know, because you wouldn't need the three you know, thing weeks in advance, hopefully. Because you would have you know, some other thing going on that would help you know, uh, and, and it wouldn't lead to this sort of stuff. So, uh, you know, the, the notion that uh, it, you know, we have better outcomes is it's very hard to defend. It, it's post facto, I would say. No, it's, 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 empirically, it's empirically true. And I'll say I don't give lip service to the poor. Uh, I care about poor kids. I care about poor kids that are priced out of the labor market by minimum wages. I care about poor kids that are priced out of jobs because of licensing laws. I care about poor kids that don't have a job because we've limited growth and jobs are not being created in this country. The way to solve the problem of poverty is by more freedom and more jobs, not by more regulations and more controls and more redistribution. We'll stop, we'll stop it there. <laughs>